Hey guys, I'm Vanessa Ron, figure competitor with Team G-Force. I'm here at the Retro Fitness in Matawan, New Jersey, and standing alongside me, I have G-Force physique competitor, Vinny Russo. Hi, Vinny. How you doing? Now, I'm doing good. How are you? I'm all right. I'm hanging in there. The last time I saw you, you were at the MPC East Coast in your first ever physique show, where you took second, right? Yes, that's right. And who coached you along with that? Uh, Dan Horton coached me along with that, and uh, got to give all the props to him in the world, man. He took a, gave me the right diet plan, gave me the right workout and cardio, cardio regimen, and he took my physique, you know, he put it to its uh, true physical potential, and that's all I could ask for, and it worked out great, and I'm staying with him. Staying with you, boys. How, how did he find you, or how did you hear about physique competitions? Because you sort of came onto the scene out of nowhere and just fit the bill perfectly. Well, what happened was... I was training and some girl that was with you guys, she told me, you know, why don't you try competing? You know, I go through G-Force, they could train you. I'm like, I really don't know what to do. They're like, well, you know, these guys, they give you a nutrition plan that you follow and they give you the cardio and things like that. So I was like, all right, let me try it out. So I met with Dan and I'm like, yo, I want to do bodybuilding. And he's like, I don't think you should do bodybuilding. I think you should do physique. Trust me, I can see it. You know, you, you excel there. He's like, it's a new category. You know, they're looking for, you know, professionals coming up. I was like, all right, I'll try it out. And that's how I got into it. He f was like, you know, it might work best for you, so I went with it. it. It did work really well for you because you took second in a very tough class. And I kind of didn't see anything about you for a little while. And the next thing I know, you are being flown out to L.A. for a bodybuilding body space competition, right? Yes, yes, that is correct. Um, what happened was I'm part of bodybuilding.com. I was part of the body space uh, program. And what happened was... They were doing a body space spokesmodel for 2012. You had to fill out an application. You had to put in, submit photos and videos. And what happened was they had 500 guys and 500 girls. And voting went on throughout the site by the members of the site. And the top 20 men and the top 20 females got picked for the semifinalists. So I saw that and I was like, oh, man, I got to get my diet in check. I got to get my cardio in check. This was right after Thanksgiving. So I just got done indulging. And... Um, from there, the administrators and the bodybuilding.com team picked you know, the top five finalists. I was one of them. So they flew us out to LA, put us in a hotel, and we competed. Now, I know Danny Houghton got you in shape for the competition. Did you go immediately to him for a diet to get back in shape when you heard about this? The first thing I did, once I found that, I texted him, like, listen, I need a plan. Uh, I'm sorry, but I'm sorry to throw this on you. He's like, oh, don't worry about it. This is great. I was like, should I? I was like, should I even do it? Because I've been eating terrible. You know, it was right after the competition, so I was indulging. It was right after Thanksgiving. And I'm like, should I even do it? He's like, yeah, man, go for it. And he was like, I, I can help you out. We'll put you on a regimen. And that's exactly what we did. So with the help of G-Force and your own determination, you're making a name for yourself out there. What's next for you with competitions? Well, right now I'm going to do um, the Mid-Atlantics. It's in May, and I'll be in the physique category. And hopefully from there I go to uh, Junior USA's or Junior Nationals and hopefully I'll win. <laughs> okay, so I think you're, I don't know, it's May, so how many weeks? Are we eight weeks out, about ten weeks? Yeah, we're about eight or nine weeks out right now. Yeah. Okay, so what kind of workout are you going to do today? Well, today today's supposed to be my day off, but I felt good about coming in here and I felt good about lifting. So I, I, I already did all my workouts, you know, the whole week. So I'm going to just go through like a, a full body circuit, basically. So I'll do an exercise for back. I'll do an exercise for chest, shoulders. I'm not going to do legs because I do legs tomorrow and I usually kill them. So I want to keep them nice and fresh. So this is a pretty good workout for anyone that's just looking for a nice pump that maybe has worked out everything already. Yeah, this, this type of workout is something that I would probably do, you know, a couple days you know, a week before the competition, you know, just give that full body pump. All right. I'm excited to see it. After your last show, it seems that you enjoyed it and you want to compete again. Did you get feedback from the judges? And is there anything this season you're looking to improve on? Okay. Yeah. Um, well, for my first competition, I got a lot of feedback from the judges. I went and asked them and, you know, Glenn told me some specific things. He said, number one, your tan might be just a little bit too dark, so I gotta go a little bit lighter with the tan. But um, also, not to be as big, you know, physique's more of uh, athletic fit. You know, it's not that big stocky. So I'm just, so I'm not trying to, you know, push a lot of weight. I'm in there just stimulating the muscles now. You know, I'm, I changed up my workout to make sure that I fit this category. So are you doing more reps with a little bit less weight? I do more pausing at peak contraction points. I do more just focus on stimulating more than the amount of weight I push. So I still stay in the 8 to 12 rep range, but 
you know, I'm, I'm, like if I'm doing inclined dumbbell press, I'll squeeze, hold it, you know, things like that. Gotcha. So now that your off season is pretty much done because you're about eight weeks out from your show, how involved was Danny Houghton with your off season diet? And what were the changes that he basically made now that it's contest time? Oh, well, basically what happened was I told him, I, te I text him every day. I basically ask him questions about everything. You know, I bug him with questions. And he, he, yeah, he always answers back and he always gives me feedback. But what we did in the off season was he was like, we had to find a maintenance level for carbs. So I was around 200 grams and I tried staying there day in day. I still ate the same food. You know, um, I would give myself a cheat day on Saturdays would be my cheat day. You know, I'd have a cheat meal at night, I'd go out to eat. And, um, but now coming down to the eight week period, it's gotta be completely strict, no cheat meals, you know, cardio five times a week. And the meals, basically I'm gonna do a carb cycling. So I'll do a high carb day, a moderate and a low day and I'll just keep rotating like that. How often do you go in to see Danny in person and what is his feedback typically? Um, feedback, tip, well, I usually go about every weekend to go see him. I take the ride down and see him and, you know, he gives me the look. He stands there. It's the look. He stands there like this. <laughs> it's the look. And uh, last time he saw me, he said, oh, yeah, you put on a little bit, but, you know, that's expected. But usually it's always, it's always a positive feedback. He's like, all right, your back looks great. You know, maybe lay off it because it's too big. You know, or like, yeah, stand like this, you know, put that chest out, you know, you have a good chest. So he's always giving me positive feedback and I just take it. I take it so, so it's critical, but it's motivating at the same time. Exactly. Exactly. So, Vinny, I know that you were an athlete when you were younger and you played tons of sports, but I always try to, you know, mention to my female friend athletes that this sport is unlike anything you've ever competed in. Would you agree? Oh, definitely. Definitely. See, like with. When I was growing up, my father trained me for football and baseball, and that's what basically got me involved in everything. You know, he had me in the weight room doing basic power lifts and had me speed training, you know, and that's what got me started with all this training and gave me my determination and willpower. But when you're training for a show, when you're training, when, when you have to keep that strict of a diet, you have to make sure that you hit every body part. And I mean, it's a lot different than training for, let's say, training for football where, you know, you could go in there, you do your squats, you know, you do your sprints, you get your endurance. Um, yeah. Yeah, and you get to eat pasta, you know, and you can eat it right after, and you feel energized, and, you know, you got to push yourself here. Like, I know a couple weeks out, man, I, I just, I don't even want to be in the gym. I'm, I'm burnt out, you know, I'm, my body's drained of energy, and you just got to push through it, and it's a lot tougher mentally to deal with it than it is, you know, training for another sport. You said it. I think it's so tough mentally, and I always try to explain that to people, that the discipline from a younger age as an athlete helps, but... Ultimately, it's up to you to do this sport because no one's pushing you day in and day out at the gym. Yeah, no one's going to push you. You, you know, you got you to gotta roll yourself out of bed at 530 in the morning and do your cardio before breakfast, you know. It's no one else. I mean, you got to set your alarm. You got to push yourself. I mean, when you're, when you're playing a sport, you know, you have a team. You have a team there to motivate you. You have your coaches to tell you what to do. I mean, here, I have my coach, Dan. He tells me what to do, but it still takes me to go out and do it, you know. So it's up to me. So just as difficult as it is to, you know, kind of be your own self-motivator, do you find the reward that much greater when your goal is accomplished? Because it kind of is, you know, you and your coach, that's it. Yeah. No, it's, it's definitely, it's, it's kind of like being in there in a boxing ring. I mean, it's it's one-on-one, -on -one, you know, and that's the way I see it when I'm going out there. It's like, it's me versus, it's, up, it's me versus these other competitors. And if I fail, then it's on me. I'm the only person to blame. So... That's how I feel. It's like, who did their homework at the end of the night? And that's going to come out on top. What are your ultimate goals to accomplish at the end of this season? To uh, win first in my first competition this season, then to take it, go on to nationals, get my pro card, and then take it from there. Sounds good. I'll throw in the overall at your first show. Win your class in the overall and then get the pro card. All right. That's what I'm moving.